In this ChemScape presentation, we will learn about corrosive substances and how to safely handle and store this hazardous material. Corrosive substances are very common in the workplace. Everyone who works with corrosives must be aware of their hazards, what their controls are, and how to work safely with them. Corrosives have hazardous properties that can corrode metal and damage body tissues like the skin, eyes, respiratory, or digestive tract. You can identify a corrosive with this GHS pictogram. The pH scale runs from 0 to 14 and ranks chemicals in terms of their acidity or alkalinity. A pH of 7 is considered neutral. Anything below 7 is acidic and anything above 7 is alkaline or basic. The further a substance is from 7 on the scale, the stronger it is. A substance like battery acid or stomach acid with a pH less than 2 will be corrosive. A substance like ammonia or bleach with a pH greater than 10 will also be corrosive. Most accidental exposures to corrosives in the workplace occur because of splashes during pouring, splashes from mixing, diluting, and chemical reactions, spills while carrying containers and from leaking containers, vapors from open or leaking containers. Routes of entry into the body include inhalation, ingestion, skin contact, and skin absorption. Breathing in corrosive vapors will irritate and burn the inner lining of the nose, throat, windpipe, and lungs. In serious cases, this results in pulmonary edema, a buildup of fluid in the lungs that can be fatal. Swallowing corrosives burns the sensitive lining of the mouth, throat, esophagus, and stomach. In non-fatal cases, severe scarring of the throat may occur and could result in losing the ability to swallow. If a corrosive material touches the skin, it can severely irritate or even badly burn and blister the skin. Severe chemical burns over 30 to 40% of the body can cause death. If a corrosive material contacts the eye, it can severely damage the eyes. Scars or permanent blindness can result because eye tissue is much more sensitive than other skin. Certain factors influence exposure and effects on the body. The symptoms and severity of a chemical burn will depend on the type of exposure, the length of time your skin was in contact with the chemical, if your skin had open cuts or wounds, or was intact during contact, the location of contact, the amount and strength of chemical used, and whether the chemical was a gas, liquid, or solid. Corrosives break down metal and can damage containers, equipment, installations, and building components. Factors that influence corrosion include the strength of the acid or base, heat, and higher temperature. Corrosives can also be flammable or combustible. They can easily catch fire and burn or explode. Some corrosives are incompatible with other chemicals. They may undergo dangerous chemical reactions and give off a toxic gas or develop explosive properties if they contact other highly reactive substances. Reference the SDS or the label on the container for this information. Let's review safe work practices to protect yourself from chemical exposure at work. Elimination or substitution can be the best way to reduce a hazard. Ask if there's a safer chemical or process. Review the SDS of the proposed substitute to ensure it will do the job effectively and safely. New hazards may be introduced and should be reviewed before making any changes. To learn about the hazards and controls of the corrosive you are working with, review Section 2 of the SDS or check the label on the container of the product. Use SDS binders or CHAMP to search for the product's SDS. Ask your supervisor for clarification if necessary. Use the engineering controls prescribed for your workplace. This can include isolation of the product, containing the product in process systems or piping, working behind a barrier, such as an enclosure, local exhaust ventilation, process or equipment modification, splash guards. Ventilation systems remove corrosive vapors, fumes, mists, or airborne dusts from the workplace and reduce their hazards. Engineering controls need to be used as directed and maintained. If equipment fails, stop work immediately and contact a supervisor. Protecting your skin is key to working with corrosives as they cause burns on contact. This may include chemical-resistant gloves, aprons, boots, long sleeves, coveralls, or chemical suits. Protecting your eyes and face from vapors or unintended contact like a splash may involve using chemical safety goggles or face shield. 
Avoid breathing corrosive vapors, fumes, dusts, or mists by using a respirator. If respirators are necessary, use a full-face respirator for corrosives. For protection, the respirator needs to fit the individual, and the cartridges need to match the hazard. Know how to handle emergencies, fires, spills, personal injury, involving the corrosive materials you work with. Do you know where the closest eyewash station and safety shower is located, and how to use them? In case of exposure, immediately flush contaminated eyes or skin with water for at least 20 to 30 minutes, sometimes longer. Then seek medical attention. Practice good housekeeping, including clean up any spills and buildup of corrosives promptly using corrosive-resistant material, such as plastic or rubber. Never return unused material to the original container, as it may contain a contaminant which may cause a chemical reaction. Dispose of all material after one use. Regular maintenance of equipment is important in preventing leaks or emissions of corrosives into the workplace. Good hygiene avoids unintended exposure with hazardous chemicals. Wash hands before eating, drinking, smoking, or using bathroom. Remove and clean contaminated clothing before wearing it again, or discard it. Wash exposed skin thoroughly at the end of the workday. Don't accidentally ingest chemicals at work. Do not smoke, drink, chew gum, or eat in areas where hazardous chemicals are present. Store food and tobacco products away from areas where chemicals are used. Corrosives need to be stored away from incompatible materials. This chart, found in SDS Binders or a CHAMP resource section, provides some general segregation rules with acid and bases. Storage areas should be labeled with the potential hazard. Store in a cool, dry, well-ventilated area with a consistent temperature, as recommended by the manufacturer. Corrosives can become highly reactive with sudden temperature changes or exposure to heat. When storing corrosive products, ensure containers are not damaged and properly labeled. Store containers at a convenient height for handling, below eye level if possible. Keep containers tightly closed when not in use. Secondary containment is important for containing spills or leaks. Use drip trays and ensure the tray is chemical resistant. Large containers may require dikes around liquid storage areas and sills or ramps at door openings. Avoid damaging containers of corrosives when handling. Large drums can be moved in specially designed drum cradles. Use self-closing, portable containers for carrying, storing, and dispensing small amounts of corrosive liquids. Take care when dispensing or transferring corrosives from one container to another. Dispense from only one container at a time. Finish all the dispensing of one material before starting to dispense another. Be sure containers are closed after dispensing. Control for dusts, mists, vapors, or fumes. Use a corrosion-resistant pump for transferring liquids into other containers. Transfer corrosive solids using tools like scoops or shovels that are corrosion-resistant. Precaution needs to be taken when mixing corrosives, as they can be highly reactive. If you need to mix a corrosive with water, it generates a large amount of heat. Acids should be poured slowly in small amounts into cold water with frequent stirring. Corrosive waste is hazardous. Use corrosion-resistant containers. Label containers with their contents. Take precautions with empty containers, as they can have residue inside them. Treat as corrosive waste. Dispose of corrosives as per hazardous waste collection instructions and local environmental laws. Stay safe at work so you can stay healthy in your personal life. If you have further questions regarding this topic, please contact your health and safety representative.